<laughs> Sayori. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, there you are. Sitting at a desk in the corner of the I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? She's facing out again. Ah. Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Are you okay? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? This feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. You worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Shows a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance around at Sayori before walking towards everyone else, but the conversation has already dispersed. Everyone back to their usual activities. Another weirdly close reading session. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently, since they've been preparing for the... <coughs> Excuse me. Festival, they must have been spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Hey, what's up? This might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm re reading a little too much into it, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Okay. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm sure, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to know, ask if you knew anything is all, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I care about the well-being of my clumper. <laughs> I have the most terrible habit of conjoining words when I shouldn't club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. You sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person? What does that mean? I'm saying that maybe the thing on our mind is you. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? <clears throat> well, I probably s shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else. Eh. It's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. It's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different than how it's always been. Is she not like that around other people? You're so funny. Have you thought maybe you've only always seen her so cheerful? Is this just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? Also figure skating pose. I forgot to call it out this time. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. You should just forget about what I just said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know I won't be able to, well, I won't be able to let her words get out of my head. She stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she keeps her voice quiet so that I can't hear from here. I sigh and sit down by myself. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her, to have fun with everyone else. But that's just impossible when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her, that I'm letting this weigh, on me, weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? Glance around the room. Suddenly, 
Oh, she's waiting for us to read. But she looks away just quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. She's never really seen it. Yuri approach anyone to start a conversation on her own accord. Yeah. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a lot easier for me, or it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit on the one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts. How were you even be able to tell that I was thinking at all? Well, it's something that I do a lot, so it wasn't hard to me spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. Stop getting so defensive. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if it caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, then there are those who find the most comfort in keeping it to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, I would be glad to listen. Guess it's really not that big a deal. I was just feeling a little bit uneasy about Sayori. Yeah, she seems off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. Excuse me. Oh man, that was... I meant to turn my... I'm stupid, that was in the direction of the microphone. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Stop it. Eh. Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been a lot, been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. And perhaps it's a little unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. <clears throat> There are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you know them. Ah. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on the inside of her head. You know, the whole shattered bottle thing seemed representative of that. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? No. Oh. Mm. Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Why does everyone have to do this? Ah, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri... You're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, well, that's not a compliment, is it? Uh, it, wa it was... It is... Oh, that, I refuse to say that sentence. That sentence can suck it. I hate, I hate that phrase so much. Almost got me, game. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. Should be taking my mind off the whole thing anyway. Oh boy, more jigsaw puzzle. Oh! No descriptions this time, huh? After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. 
Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Uh, we'll start with Natsuki first today. Yeah, no thanks. You didn't even... Next. Wow, she hates me. That's okay. Uh, Monica, and then Yuri, and then Sayori. Hi. Have you uh, have you thought about what you want? <laughs> have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, I want to read the Raven. Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I have to give it some more thought. Or maybe the highway man. Okay, no pressure. Oh wait, that was long. I knocked my microphone over. <laughs> my bad. But whatever you do, I'm sure it will turn over or turn out great. Thankfully, this thing is like super sensitive, and someone could whisper something across the room, and people like on a PSN chat would be able to hear me or hear it. But whatever you do, I'm sure it will turn out great. It will also make me happy to see. Ah, ha, ha. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let her take the poem I am holding in my hands. Her style's gotten so refined. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. It's been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words in the past couple of days than she's talked in a whole year. I'm not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. No, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. Certainly putting in a lot of effort. Must really like her. Eh, that's... Figure skating pose, ha ha ha. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. First of all, the plot she described in that story... Sounds cool. And I wish they would actually tell me what is happening in it. <laughs> well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing, so this is a pity thing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all of her time alone. Besides, that novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. Sing-songy quotation, I get you. Just be careful. What's that mean? I know Yuri isn't used to opening herself up, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, it could be- oh. I see. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. Just a bandage. Ooh. Say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. Sing song quotation. I mean she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Her. Alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. Oh, more spacious stuff here. The old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, all that was ever thought, and here I am, a feather. A feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind, day after day I search, search with little hope, knowing that legends don't exist. But even whenever, when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilt. Twilight. What am I being? Why am I saying it like that? Twilight. Sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and I fall even more gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and the forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning, no purpose, and we only seek the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. With a breath, she lets me back afloat, and I pick up with a gust of wind. That was cool. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. 
In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't we start to lose- wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? Yeah. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the clubs referred- We're fighting about things that are more sad than happy. Aha, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? That's why happy music isn't very popular either. Humans aren't two-dimensional two creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean I'm one-dimensional? Ah, uh, yeah, that. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Is this going to be another fourth wall break? <clears throat> oh, no. Not this time. Are you ever too shy to share your feelings because you're afraid of writing? It's not that good. It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much effort into. But finding other people who enjoy writing and then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, you'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, was that supposed to be a message to people who like? Okay. Next is going to be Yuri. Your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me is nothing but nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. That is the wrong way to put it. It's never came naturally to me, either. But I have been able to prove so much thanks to you. You're really the only example I was chasing after. Is that so? Gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought I would feel this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something you've never even shared with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? No one to share it with. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Did you know that? <clears throat> it's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. Or take a nap. That's what I did. I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's like one way to put it, anyway. But, books are so, of amazing, or so full of amazing, inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with, or people you just want to know and make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know. Those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. It's, you, you look like an average anime girl. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. <clears throat> People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all. Calm down. I wasn't... I, I, you know nothing. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. Don't worry about it. I don't even know how to make myself feel happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult... <laughs> There's been nothing difficult... These people are too self-conscious. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel so comfortable with myself when I talk to others. That's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated. And if some people don't see it that way, then screw them. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends, and I would say I would have at least one success. 
I would say at least two, and Sayori was already your friend. The only one who really hates us is Natsuki. Um, if you put it that way. Yeah. We're really friends now, aren't we? She puts her head in her hands. This time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want me to sh do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. <laughs> 